Liz Simons, comedian and blogger for the DVRfiles.com. And I'm Jenny Lewis Ford, creator of the Chicks Talk Radio Network. Thanks for tuning into Herflix. Tonight's going to be a very special episode because it's March, Women's History Month, and we're going to celebrate all the fabulous things that women do in film and television. Tonight we're going to review Fifty Shades of Grey and McFarlane USA. And we have an interview with Anita Kopaz, who is nominated for best, an Oscar for Best Documentary Short for her film, Joanna. And we're going to introduce a new segment called Heart Flakes Predicts, the trailer watch. Tonight we're going to look at Pitch Perfect 2, and we're going to see if it's going to be a hit or a miss. But first, let's go to the red carpet for the 2014 Muse Awards. Jessica Schur reports. Hi, I'm Jessica Schur for Herflix here at the red carpet for the New York Women in Film and TV's Muse Awards. These awards honor women who have made outstanding contributions in television, film, and digital media industries. Wanda Sykes is an Emmy and GLAAD Award winner, stand-up comic, and author. She has written for The Chris Rock Show and has appeared on The New Adventures of Old Christine, Curb Your Enthusiasm, and most recently on Amazon Prime's Alpha House. I, You're funny. I hope so. If oh, not, I do if not, I'm so. just going to have to go to nursing school. Or something better than that. Yeah, right. maybe you can yeah. be a paramedic. Yeah. yeah, something could save lives. Uh, the driving part. Not so much. Me. Yeah, yeah, take the subway. Yeah. So, what does it mean to be here? Congratulations, first of all. Thank to be you. here, to be honored with all these wonderful women. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm honored. I am. Uh, this is great. You know. Yeah. You belong. Yes. Yeah. A group of women get together and say, Hey, let's give her something. Yeah, yes. Give you something. Who's, who's mad at that? No. Who's no. mad at that? You don't. You, you are here. I'm excited. And yes. You, and I would like to know. Um, when did you start telling your story. When did I start telling When did my you get story? on stage? This back in 1987. Yeah. I've been doing this a while. Where? Yeah, 87 in, in D.C. In D.C.? Yeah. yeah. Something I, you know, I, I was working for um, the National Security Agency, believe it or not. Done. And I just, I just knew it was something else that I was supposed yeah. to be doing. This year's Lorene Arbus Changemaker Award goes to Abigail Disney. She's known for her acclaimed documentary, Pray the Devil Back to Hell, and her work as a philanthropist, activist, and executive producer of award-winning documentaries. What does it mean to be here at New York Women in Film and TV? I can't, I can't even describe to you what it means to me to be honored uh, in the film business by, by, by women, because this, is, this has been a long journey. It may have started late, but this is my whole life is kind of leading to where I am today. And to be acknowledged for that makes me so happy. Right. And what is it to tell stories? When did you know that you were a storyteller? <laughs> well, I'm a natural storyteller. You know, people in my family would wish I would stop <laughs> some days. Um, but, and I did a lot of work with women around the world doing really amazing work. And I would tell that story to raise money for them. But, you know, when I saw what the stories did for them themselves, then I was changed. So now with Pray the Devil Back to Hell, is that that story of women? What is that story about? I had a dream. And it was like a crazy dream. We decided to protest. We wore the white, saying to people we were out for peace. Well, it's an amazing story about women choosing peace and stepping forward for peace in the most courageous way. My biggest strength is that I uh, I never am afraid to keep learning and be a beginner every day. Oh, God. I, I should have worn heels. And I did wear heels. Your green eyes are gorgeous. Thanks for the dress I have green eyes, too, but you can't. They look blue now. Now with the blue, yeah. yeah but they're, yours God. are great with that green Thanks. dress. The Emerald City. You Thanks. know what? This would fit, I think, on my right arm. <laughs> Your right arm. Yeah. You'll wear think, it as a sleeve. You, if you wanted to, I mean, why not? Yeah, I, can, I, know. I can loan it. I mean, it's out. cold out. It is cold outside. Yeah, baby, hey. it's cold outside. Yeah. You know, thank goodness you're a comedian. You're going to do our luncheon, so this will be so much fun. How's your neck uh, right now? It's, it's taller. Okay. Taller. Good. That's okay. I'm going to get taller for this one. Okay. Now, what are you doing here? I'm emceeing. I, I am the MC. You know, they asked me to MC the Women in Film and Television Muse Awards. Yeah. I was and here. Where were you? I was like, absolutely. Totally. Maybe I'll get a job. Out of it. Yeah, no, I didn't. I just, and I love, I, I know. I, I know. No, I never did it before. This is my first year. Shucks. Yeah. This is your big I did, break. I actually did, um, I did a panel for these people. Yeah. Um, the ladies. Uh, the ladies. Right. Uh, I did a panel uh, for the New York Comedy Festival about, the, the, you know, um, what is it? 
getting rid of the myth of that women aren't funny. Oh, and, yeah. And it was so great. And they said, can you please come host totally. this? And I was like, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I just had my son's bar mitzvah, and I have a nice dress to wear. So people say it's the year of the woman. I, yes. I do believe we're going to get, we are going to have a woman pre president. We are going to have a woman president. No, it's not me. But I feel like this is the century of the woman. Thank you. Well, in that case, it's great to be here. Yeah. With Don Ostroff, who was the head of CW, now over at Condé Nast. Now, what made that transition happen? Well, it was really very simple. My husband wanted to move back to New York. So, being um, a good partner to him, we decided to pick our family up, move to New York, and then I, you know, met the people at Condé Nast and saw what a great opportunity there was, taking so many of the IP, you know, the, the articles, the brands, and starting to exploit them on other platforms like television, film, and digital video. And do you feel that they listened to your voice mostly because you had a background in film and TV? I think that, you know, they they respect what I've done in the past, but what we are looking at is really a big shift in the in the in the business right now with digital video. So for film and TV, I think it's easy to take a lot of the articles and a lot of the brands and start to really translate them into some form of film and TV. We've had great success so far, so we're very excited. We have several shows on the air and several movies that are going to be coming up. But we also spend a lot of our time in the digital video landscape. We created a platform called thescene.com, and it has not only our premium video, but also premium video of partners that range from BuzzFeed and The Verge to ABC News and Weather Channel and PBS. So it's a wide range of premium video, and it's all in one place. Because it's very hard in the in, in the digital space to find things these days. So our goal is to really have one place to find all the premium content. Uh, kind of focused energy, so to speak. Yeah. yeah, and we really need it these days. It's a sea of so many things. So much, a sea of everything. And what does it mean to be here, being honored by women in film? Well, it's an honor that is incredibly humbling. I mean, I know so many women who've been honored um, by this organization before, all of whom I have deep respect for, many of whom have been my own mentors. And so to be here with these women in particular this year, it really is a, a great honor. They've all contributed in different ways. And as I said, it's humbling and also, you know, something that I think I'll never forget. Aww. Well, thank you so much thank for your you time. So thank you. We're here with Herflix. McFarland USA stars Kevin Costner and is directed by Nikki Caro, who is also responsible for the critically acclaimed hit Whale Rider. Here's the trailer. Welcome to McFarland. This is a farming town. These kids working here are invisible. They come from the fields and they go back to the fields. Mr. White, if we're going to reach him, now's the time. He is. He is. Diaz, popular name where you guys come from? Why? Got a popular name where you come from? <laughs> All right, run a lap. Go. They're fast. They are. Cross country running. California is holding their first state championship this year. You do understand we don't have a cross country team? Yep. You've coached cross country before? No. You competed in high school, maybe? No. Well, you sound perfect. Anybody seen Danny? Danny Diaz? Hey, we needed seven. Yeah, seven runners, not six runners in. Danny Diaz. Hey, you're our anchor, Danny, and not because you're fat. And you are a little fat, okay? So we better lose some weight. Let's go. Fourth place, that's not too shabby. Fourth out of four, also known as last. Better luck next time, boys. <laughs> this is gonna come down to which runners can handle the pain. Let's hit it again. Mr. White, each hour that my boys train with you, they do not work with me. That's food off our table. No one stays in McFarland unless they have to. There ain't nothing American dream about this place. I'm guessing running's the best thing you've got. Me too. I'll be honest with you, the odds are stacked against us. You guys are superhuman. There's nothing you can't do with that kind of strength, with that kind of heart. Let's go show them how it's done. Uno, dos, tres. <laughs> After watching the movie and watching that trailer, I have two words for this movie. Disney. Boom. <laughs> it's such a like prepackaged, happy Disney movie. And um, 
it actually is a prepackaged Happy Disney movie. <laughs> well, it's funny. I actually didn't wasn't aware going into it that it was Disney, and I felt the same way the minute I saw the credits. I thought, are you kidding me? Mm -hmm. I'm a grown woman seeing a, a Disney movie, yes. with, and I don't even have children. But I will actually say I was really surprised how much I loved the movie. To me, look, it, it, it's an inspirational story mm -hmm. about a, a man who comes into a very underprivileged, disadvantaged community mm -hmm. and... Mm -hmm he shows them that they're amazing and he raises them up, but they raise themselves up. And even, look, I always say I'm a white woman. No one's hiding that. I was a little bit wary at first of sort of that sort of white man savior. Yeah. And I was conscious of Who's that. Who's named Jim White, right? I know or Jim White so, Blanco. Come on. It, oh, listen, I have to say, I had reservations watching the trailer. It's not something that I would normally watch. Right. I was pleasantly surprised at the end of the movie. You can't help but feel good about a happy right. ending and a good story, but I did have reservations and here's why. You have this man who knows nothing about the sport he's trying to coach go into an underprivileged area. It's full of stereotypes, cliches. And he said it was an honor to be invited into your home. Tell him I say thanks. The whole speaking to a Spanish man who actually speaks English. Mm -hmm. When you have the culture clash, you have two people coming in and they kind of play off that a little bit. But what's surprising about the movie is that it's well acted, and to be honest, this role was perfect for Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. Because he, he's pretty much Kevin Costner in the movie. Well, he movie, gets, yeah. he plays as sports coach base. What I, what I thought was interesting is I knew going into it that it was based on a true story, but when I was looking it up after, mm -hmm. I mean, there, there are some elements that you can tell were invented just for the movie, but overall, the, what he did and what these guys did, it's pretty inspirational. You know, this is a, all these, the, the students in this film, they all were children of immigrants, yes. um, f you know, maybe immigrants themselves, and so many of them, went, they end up all going to college. He created a program. Yes, Kevin Costner, didn't, his character did not have experience coaching cross country. At least they, they but he still led them to. I think it was 14 state championships. Mm -hmm. And just, I do find that I found myself getting very emotional. I found myself crying. Um, it reminded me of Hoosiers. <laughs> I, I got very. It was a classic feel good movie about the underdog, yes. and I really really appreciated it. There were a couple scenes I thought the whole quinceañera scene yeah. was totally unnecessary. I thought there were some things. I think it could have been 20 minutes shorter. I do think that I, I will say that I was very surprised. I'm not a big biopic girl and mm. I'm not a big sports movie girl, but knowing that these kids actually succeeded really touched me. And I feel like for a Disney movie, it was a little real. Like you yeah. see that the neighborhoods were kind of rough where he moved, you know, you have this transplant into a bad neighborhood and he makes the most out of it, but they didn't sugarcoat it. No. This was a bad neighborhood. These kids had it rough. It wasn't always easy. And you know, when you think of Disney, you think of like cool runnings, you think of like something that's really like glossed over. But the saving grace of this movie is that they touched into the lives of the actual people. I'm from New York, guys. If I had to read it with a coffee cup, I'll say I'll give it about a cup and a half. It's just not my thing, but yeah. I did leave feeling inspired and full of light. But that's exactly what you get when you watch a Disney movie. So I know. not surprised at all. I know. It's funny. Yeah. I enjoyed it in spite of it being a Disney movie. I got to give it three and a half cups. I think anyone who's a huge sports fan, mm -hmm. a fan of the underdog, if you like movies like Hoosiers or Rudy, this will it's a totally worthwhile movie for you to see. Either way, go see it. It's a great movie. Yeah. Correspondent Sheila Scaff had the opportunity to sit down with Joanna director Anita Kopaz. Here's her conversation. I think that the greatest thing about this film is that it's about the simplest things. Seems like um, normally our lives are so interesting, so full of everything. Like we forget about this simple moments. Yeah. Talking to your kids, having yeah. this great uh, relationship, yeah. laying on the grass, yeah. drinking their coffee, and uh, yeah, just walking in the woods, yeah. picking up mushrooms. It costs nothing. Yeah. So uh, suddenly people watch that and they think like, oh my God, these things can, can be so beautiful and yeah. so inspiring, yeah. so we can do as well. Yeah. And just think, 
do we have to know that we're gonna die within a very short time to start? To start yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. This is the question that I kept asking myself during this movie. Okay. Some people have those things naturally, like just they, they have, mm -hmm. and some of them have to learn that the death is mm -hmm. really coming. Yeah. To start um, realizing uh, things that they always dream yeah. of, not to wait. Yeah. Yeah. We, we wait too much for, for living. When you are a female uh, director and you are a mother, I really think that for all of us, it would be great if we, could, if we can put into our movie budget yeah. uh, the experiences for Nyani, oh, yeah, for, 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 for our kids yeah. on the set, yeah. the hotel and traveling as well. Yeah. Because uh, otherwise, I'm unhappy yeah. being a, a woman filmmaker traveling so much and um, not seeing my daughter as often as uh, I even not want, but I should. Yeah. But of course I want. Yeah. And hugging her through Skype yeah. is not good. Yeah. I, I would be even more efficient, I think, when uh, she would be more often with me yeah. because I constantly think about her. Yeah. I constantly cry at pains. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we are still mother. Liz, one of the best parts about going to the movies for me is watching the trailers. I'm addicted. I love them. So I'm super excited that we're doing this segment called Herflix Predicts the Trailer Watch. Oh, me too. I love I love the trailers because that's the time if I need to sneak out, <laughs> go to the bathroom, <laughs> get a snack. No, just kidding. But it's always good to see what you're, what is coming up. Yeah. It's really exciting. So today, we're actually going to look at Pitch Perfect 2. So let's take a look and see how it's going to be. Two bottles of whiskey for the way And I sure would like some sweet company And I'm leaving tomorrow, what do you say? Password. Fart noise. Did you not see the parentheses? Could be the ham in that man sandwich. Yeah. Let's go! The World Championships of Acapella, where every four years the best from around the globe compete for world domination. No American team has ever won. That's because they hate us. The whole world. <laughs> The whole world hates us. Hey, no. We're gonna kick your ass. I'm sorry, I don't speak loser. What did you say? She actually speaks eight languages, but loser is not one of them. I will do whoever it takes in order for us to get back to the top. You mean whatever it takes? Yeah, I'll do that too. Every Bella must christen the house by sliding down the staircase. Let me show you. <laughs> Crushed it. Oh! I'm just kidding. Would you like to have sex later? No! Okay, you said no, but you winked. So that's a no then? A hundred percent no. I will say that the trailer for Pitch Perfect 2 certainly makes the movie look fun and exciting and peppy. It was actually really funny, and um, I'm kind of sad now that I didn't see the first I know, one. I me too. Well, it's yeah. funny. I, rem I think anyone who has ever gone to college in America knows that acapella just rem it reminds me so much of college. And, and sometimes, like, I, I... What college did you go to? Well, <laughs> I went to Duke, and there were so many acapella groups, and they would always be playing. And I, I'm honestly, like, acapella, I can't listen to anymore. But at the same time, I, the movie does look fun. Yeah. I mean, I, my college experience was more a beer. But, I know. Um, wow. <laughs> this is just really fun. And, and I like that the movie is very... It's kind of... The trailer was a little sarcastic. Like, it was yeah. poking fun at itself. And I love that big girl. I'm a fan of her. I can't remember her name right now but she's rebel Wilson. yes i love her i love seeing her in all the movies that are coming out when i see her it attracts me to the movie and i like that she's so confident and this movie is like it looks a little over the top i will say that well it's funny i almost had yeah. a reverse experience with her because i haven't seen her in enough stuff and i think she is very talented but i felt like some of the humor it's just making i don't know i felt little mean and gratuitous um but 
I'm, I, and people love the first movie. I never saw it, yeah. and I think it does look a lot of fun. Um, they look a little too old to be college students, yes, which yes, is a little that's annoying. Yes, actually. Um, that's one thing. I don't understand why they cast like 30-year-olds to be 19, but whatever, yeah. it's Hollywood. Um, and you know, it's interesting. It's cheaper than a child actor, I guess. No, it's true. Yeah. And then Elizabeth Banks is directing this time, and mm -hmm. I think she, she helped produce the first one, and she's she was in the first one. Um, so yeah, it will be really interesting to see how she does as a director. You know, it looks like just a feel-good movie. It looks very fun and campy. And will I see it in the movies? I'm on the edge, but I yeah. definitely watch it at home on demand. Yeah. But it does look fun. I'm kind of missing out on the first one now. I agree. Yeah. Now we're going to take a look at Fifty Shades of Grey, based on the novel of the same name, which is quite scandalous, directed by Sam Taylor Johnson. Here's the trailer. So this is just an interview for the newspaper. I just have a couple of questions. Mr. Gray will see you now. What was he like? He was polite, intense, smart, really intimidating. Do you have any interests outside of work? What about you? I'd like to know more about you. There's really not much to know about me. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I am. I'm incapable of leaving you alone. Then don't. I had a rough start in life. You should steer clear of me. I don't do romance. My tastes are very singular. Enlighten me then. So, Liz. I know. <laughs> A little hot in here, huh? I know. Yes, very. <laughs> I, okay, I'll say Fifty Shades of Grey. Never read the books, um, but I knew about them, mm -hmm. and I've been following this whole saga of even making this movie. Um, it's always been a drama because you know it stars Dakota Johnson as mm -hmm. Anastasia Steele and Jamie Dornan as uh, Christian, Christian Grey, Grey. Mm -hmm. but it was supposed to be someone else, and blah blah blah. And then the, the writer, E.L. James, fought with the director the whole time. But I'll tell you, as someone who was expecting a lot of camp and not really expecting to enjoy it, I had fun. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, at times, I do think that the director was in, in on the joke. At times, mm -hmm. I don't. Um, I thought that Dakota Johnson was actually very likable. I thought her character at times was, uh, I mean, even though she was using a flip phone, which is a little ridiculous. There's so much wrong with this well, yeah. movie. I feel like that goes without saying, yes. but we have to say. There's so much wrong with it, but you are still gonna like it. That's right. the that's the part. And you know, I'm hearing. I never read the books either, because you, I would not want to be caught dead on the train I with know, that I'm, book. I'm okay. I'm too much of a snob. But I'm hearing that the movie's actually better than the book because they took liberties right. with the movie that weren't available in the book. So here's the backstory. You have this college senior in college who uh, is interviewing with this really hot, handsome, yeah. mega millionaire, billionaire guy who's, what, 27? 27, 27 years, years old. Because of course, of course. Yeah. And he never seems to be working at all, yeah. but whatever. What does he work for? Telecommunications? He like, made up his own company. I don't know. He must own Facebook or something, yeah. whatever. So in this land of make-believe, you have this 27-year-old virgin well, no. senior in college. Oh, no, no. She's, she's not 27. Yes. But come on. This this movie, I know. it takes a lot to go there. And you know, fun fact, the woman who wrote the book actually wrote it based off of Twilight. Like she was writing fan fiction for Twilight and her name was Ice Princess Dragon Lore or something like that. Amazing. And she wrote this whole book and it got picked up as a novel, and now it's a movie, so. Right. And she's made a gazillion dollars. Uh, good for her. Good for her, but you can definitely see, when you look at the movie, it's definitely a rip off of Twilight. You have a, a young girl, older guy, he keeps saying, I'm not the one, I'm bad, I'm horrible, leave me alone. She can't live without him, can't make a decision. Lots of internal dialogue. However, there's some pits that make up for it. Like, they poke fun of, you know, at themselves in the movie, and uh, you can't, 
go wrong with the guy's abs. Oh my God, yeah, he was hot. Like, well, you just can't go wrong I'll there. I'll say this, the one thing, I I think he looked the part, Jamie Dornan, he's super hot. Oh, so yeah. A lot of people are like, oh, it's the sex scenes of vanilla. Vanilla is still a flavor. Yeah. And he is <laughs> and it's delicious. still hot. <laughs> but the thing that drove me crazy, he is from Northern Ireland in real life, and I felt like so much of the movie was him concentrating on keeping an American accent that it was distracting. But if you go into this movie just expecting a camp fun, kind of like Showgirls right. or something, it's a blast. I do think it goes about 20 minutes too long. Mm -hmm. um, but for what it's worth, I, you know, I was kind of sad to have to go home alone. You know, I would have been okay. I, I have to say, as much as they try to make this movie about, like, you know, scandalous and words that I can't say on TV right now, I, know. I really wasn't quite... Oh yeah, there was no... Yeah, I wasn't, I didn't leave feeling all, dirty. you know, flustered I and know. stuff. However, you know, what I was going to say is that there were times where these two actors struggled on screen, on screen with yeah. their chemistry, and I think it was because it's such crazy. Like, the entire time, call me a cynical New Yorker, but this was like a bad Craigslist fantasy. Like, right. a Craigslist fantasy gone right. This does not happen in real no. life. You do not have a single billionaire who can't get a girl who, to do what he wants them to do. I know. Who looks I like mean, that. I mean, I mean yes. he supposedly lives in Seattle. If he came to New York, yeah. he'd be able to find every, something on every street corner. Oh, but yeah, it's, it's I definitely true. agree with you. Like, I felt like sometimes the sex scenes, even though, like, you know, they both have amazing bodies, and that part is on point, but it was also very, it felt very choreographed, very clinical. Um, but, it, and of course, it's going to be unbelievable. I mean, there were some things that drove me crazy yeah. about it, but I think that it was just, it's unintentionally or maybe intentionally, it, it, it can't. It's so good. It's, it, it's fun. Oh, and also, awesome soundtrack. Yeah, the soundtrack that soundtrack was amazing. Was amazing. And, and you know what? I'm glad they made the movie because I guess, um, you know, the con it's a little bit of a struggle for me as a feminist to say, hey, you know, this is okay. Um, but I do know that they made a lot of changes for the movie versus right. the book, and they kind of let her decide her own thing right. and what she was comfortable with. And I do appreciate that they let the characters do that. One fatal flaw, one final comment. These guys, they're named after, like, 18th century poets or something like yeah. Anastasia Steele and Christian Grey. It's like, come on, it's a little pretentious at times. Yeah. Yeah. But it's still a fun uh -huh. watch. If I had to rate it, I'd say a cup of coffee and a cigarette. <laughs> Well, that's a, after some after. Uh, hot night. Yes. Uh, I would, I give it two coffee cups and a cigarette. I uh, did to, to <laughs> take a off, shot of wine. Maybe <laughs> maybe a little bit of wine. Well, thank you so much for watching Her Flicks today. That's our show. I'm Liz Simons, comedian and blogger for thedvrfiles.com. And I'm Jenny Lewis Ford, creator of the Chicks Talk Radio Network. You can like Her Flicks on Facebook or follow us on Twitter. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel where you can let us know your thoughts about our predictions. So be on the lookout for our next show. And just, again, thank you for watching. And, and closing music by the The Archer Band.